Hi everybody, welcome to my channel. This is the first video of a new playlist I'm gonna add to my channel and it's something new for me. I never did this, my, my channel actually at the moment hosts videos of some music I recorded. So programming is not a content that you would normally find on my uh, YouTube channel. But I thought I might give it a go. It's, it's some time now. I, I thought I would like to do some uh, uh, screencast videos. I don't do gaming. I do programming. I'm a web developer and um, being forloaded at the moment, I finally have the time to, to try this. And I thought it might be a good idea to uh, try and give something back to the community. I often end up Googling or watching videos about new technologies or when I get stuck and I need some input and some help. So I thought to do something basic and try and give back, as I said, to the community and to those beginners who might find these simple scenarios of any help. A good excuse to document also how you approach creating a, a microservice, an API server, and I will be using Symfony. The task is about uh, building a REST API, which actually shouts some, some quotes, and it describes what shouts mean, uppercase and exclamation mark at the end, and it says that Although we might use a third-party API to, as a provider for our quotes, for the purpose of this simple text, they just provided a sample of quotes in, in the form of a JSON file. And um, also there are a couple of things they say and, um, as, as constraints to, to spice up things a bit, I, I guess. They want to cache the response uh, in order to avoid hitting our, um, the resource many times, which let's imagine it's going to be very expensive. So if the same person hits twice in a given T time, our endpoint, we're going to serve the cached response and not the one produced by our API. And the other constraint is the limit, let's say, the, the amount of, of uh, quotes. So here it says, uh, giving a famous person an account N returns n quotes from that person. So this n number, this limit, must be equal or less than 10. Otherwise, our API should return an error. And this is what we're gonna do. So bear with me and let's start. Let's start with clean sheet. This is my uh, folder in my, this is simply a folder in my own. This docker you see here, you'll see it in uh, getting into the game a bit later. So what we're gonna do, we said we're gonna use Symfony for this. So we're gonna go to our Symfony website and I'm doing this just so who has no idea what I'm doing can kind of follow these same instructions. So if you go to the documentation and in the getting start, getting started setup, and you scroll down a bit, here you see a bit of information on how to create a new project starting from their client, um, the Symfony client. This is not we're gonna what we're gonna do though. We're gonna create a skeleton from for a symphony project which is not a website though it's uh, here it says run this if you're building a microservice console application or api which is actually what we're going to do so we will start with this um, with this skeleton which is a simplified version not simplified with a bit less stuff than the full featured uh, skeleton, which is this website skeleton. So what we're going to do is we grab this command, which uses Composer. 
uh, if you don't know what Composer is, it's uh, sort of a package manager which gives you the ability to import and use third-party libraries into your application. So we start from here. We grab our console and we say paste the command composer create project. Uh, I will leave a, a link to, to the composer website where to grab it. Yeah, uh, here I'm supposing I have already installed, uh, so I don't need to do that. Um, mm, so create project symphony skeleton and he wants a name for our project which we're gonna call I quotes. Once you run that command, it's slowly my laptop. I really need a new laptop, guys. As I did it before, it says loading for cache from cache, but what it, it will go to the repository, download the thing for you, install it, configure it, install its dependencies. And once you've done that, you're gonna end up with uh, a new folder, I quotes, and inside of that folder, you're gonna have your Symfony application. If we open our editor, it's even slower because I'm I'm capturing the screen at the same time, I'm recording at the same time, so it's it's uh, it's slowing down. Of course, it's using resources and slowing down the whole thing. So here, let's say we open. Oh, and here it is, I quotes. Didn't open it before, so. Here we are, and we want it in this window. And here it is, our Symfony project with our bin, configuration, public folder, source, variables and a bunch of other stuff and this is our composer json file which is where composer stores the information information uh, about what um, third parties uh, stuff it's using so we installed that symphony skeleton and it pulled it, which it has uh, its own dependencies and um, it pulled in all those dependencies so it pulled in PHP of course some extensions it pulled in symphony console dot temp flex these are all so what it did I suppose instead of installing the old symphony framework it installed a single components which this project is using and for each one it specifies the version the version uh, so yeah so this is all the stuff that goes on and we will see probably how everything works uh, later on here it defines here um, some auto load for development environment and for production environment so it auto loads our source directory and our test directory as well which is not here but it's going to be there soon we're going to install some package for that so this is composer now what we need it's uh, an environment and um, some, some services to run the old thing and I'm going to use docker for that and what I did I prepared uh, a small uh, pre-configured thing let's say that I'm gonna bring in so I have I have it on this uh, public uh, github repository I called it docker symphony hmm. I don't know if, if you can think of a better name maybe leave it in the comments um, what it does, it installs Apache, configures the uh, virtual host, PHP, and Redis, which I will need in this uh, particular case. And I will use it as a 
the cache, as you remember, we said that we want to cache the response for a given time for the same user. So this is what this um, package is about. You can uh, clone it and then actually what you're going to do, you're not going to use it separated, but what you're going to do is we're going to, uh, let's say we, we, we just cloned it, right? And we have it here. What we're going to do, we're going to take this Docker folder inside our project. So we're going to simply say copy Docker into I quotes. And what this, um, the reason for this is here it is, our Docker folder with our services defined. Uh, and uh, the reason for this is um, when we uh, version with, with Git this, this project, if a, a new developer comes in your company or I don't know, uh, even even for continuous integration or deployment, you can use this, this uh, environment and all the environments are gonna be the same. So the new developer will have exactly the same environment you have. Um, and you know, you're not gonna have those cases. It doesn't work on my machine or things like that because everything is virtualized and dockerized, containerized, in, you know, in, in containers. And it's gonna be exactly the same. So Docker uses its own .m file where at the moment we just define this project name, I quotes, which is used in our Docker Compose as a prefix for our container names, containers names. Uh, and in Docker Compose, we define the services, Apache, PHP, here's the, my, my SQL, which we don't need at the moment, and Redis. And it says to build from the subdirectories in this folder. So Apache, PHP, Redis. And in particular for Apache, we have this config folder where we, we, we store our visual hosts custom configuration. So what we do, we, we mount this folder saying, look, take this folder from the host machine and mount it in the virtual machine, the Docker machine. So our configuration, it's, it's available inside the, the container. And the same thing we will probably do, or actually we already did, I already did, in this Docker file for Redis, as you see, I took this Redis conf from the Redis folder and I copy it inside the uh, virtual machine in the location where Redis expects to find this configuration. So I copy it from my host to my virtual machine, Docker machine. And this is a way you can share configurations um, you can inject, let's say, configurations into your Docker machines. So once we have this uh, um, Docker configuration in our um, in our project, we can go to the terminal inside the project folder, inside the Docker folder that we just copied in. This is the same folder. We're gonna run, uh, so um, Docker, of course you have to have it installed, you have to have it installed Docker Compose. Uh, we can run Docker PS and we see that we don't have anything running. Uh, there's no containers running. Uh, I have a um, utility called Ctop, which does exactly the same thing. This white one, it's uh, some PHP binding, PHP storm binding. Um, from some test before, we can easily remove it. Now that we go here, it's gone. So there's nothing running. And once we're here, we can say docker dash compose up 
minus D. Minus D is the flag to run it in, uh, in background. Now, as, as I already did it before testing everything was working, uh, it just brought them up. Uh, in your case, probably, if you do it for the first time, not probably, in your case, if you as you will do it, be doing it for the first time, it's going to install all the dependencies and everything. And at the end, it will uh, create and bring up the services. Now, if we go to Ctop, we see that we have these three Docker containers running. So here we are. So we have Apache, we have PHP, and we have Redis. So um, we are now the the, at the point where we can start writing some code, right? What we're going to do is we're going to try and use uh, the TDD approach. For those of you who are not familiar with it, it's a test-driven development. So what we're going to do, we're going to write unit tests before writing any code. The philosophy, the idea behind it is that you write a test and at the beginning the test should fail because you don't have the code you're testing yet. Once the test fails, you start writing the code and you make it pass. It gives you two things. You are sure that you cover your code with tests and it helps you kind of mm, write specifications in a, in a test manner for your objects. To do that, we need PHP unit. And in particular, we're going to use the uh, Symfony PHP unit bridge. So packages Symfony bridge PHP unit. So to do that, you need this command. You jump to your console in your folder, project folder and you say composer require give me this package you run it while it does its thing we're gonna look for leap functional test bundle there's a test features bundle we, we will get to this at some point probably not at the moment as we don't have a database and we grab this one as well. What this does, it's, it gives me some helpers, some new functionalities to write functional tests. You know, the tests are, um, you have unit tests, uh, acceptance tests, and functional tests. These will help you writing your functional tests. Notice that a new test has been, a uh, test folder has been created. What we need to do also, we need to configure our PHP Storm to, to run the tests in the Docker machine. So we don't need to install PHP, PHP unit and all those kinds of things on our host machine. That's the whole point, right? So what we want to do is, this is actually the first thing I do this. In the place where I work, we do, we do it differently. We, we actually get into the Docker machine. We SSH into it and we run the tests. But I've seen this in, in a video. And I will actually give a big shout to QBrain, I think it's called. Uh, I will link it in the description below. Um, it's, it's a developer, I think, from Amsterdam. Um, which is, he did more or less the same thing I'm doing at the moment. Uh, it's been an inspiration for this video. And uh, yeah, as I said, give back, right? He helped me, I'll try and help someone else. So uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to our settings. For some reasons, my shortcuts don't work. Uh, languages and frameworks, PHP. We want to add a new interpreter and we go here and get new, add 
and we select from Docker, which is a remote interpreter. We select Docker, and if you don't have any options in here, I have a bunch because I tried it already, uh, but if you don't have any options in here, you want to go to new and leave as, everything as it is, leave Unix, Unix socket here, and press OK, and you're going to have it. Uh, this is what it does. It connects to uh, your Docker service and see what images are available. So then you select your image, which in my case it's, and in your case if you use um, the Docker installation from, uh, the Docker configuration from the repository I, I told you before, it's going to be this PHP 7.4, and the path should be correct. We add it, and we have it here, PHP 7.4 FPM, and we reload the infos and successfully updated PHP info means everything is okay. We don't have a debugger installed yet in the PHP ini. We're gonna get there if we need it. So we now have a PHP interpreter. Okay. Then Docker container. We want to do some volume bindings, which is this one, and we want it to point not here. So this is the the machine, my machine, the machine host, and this is the container path. So inside of the Docker machine, we want to change this. It's this is not correct. We want it to point to slash up as that's that's what we specified in our uh, com docker configuration so and uh, one more thing to make it work we need to configure a php unit to run inside our docker container so to do that in our test frameworks uh, i have it configured already i will remove it and to show you so what we do is we create a new configuration for PHP unit by remote interpreter. We select the interpreter, which is the one we just configured in the step before. Once we have it, it points correctly from the host project root to the container slash app as defined before. And we're gonna use composer autoloader to locate um, the PHP uh, unit script to use, which is going to be in our container slash up slash vendor slash auto load dot PHP. And this should be right if we check it. Yep. So we have a PHP unit version and we're going to use a custom configuration file, which is going to be our uh, slash up slash PHP unit dot XML. And we can use the this one as PHP storm is smart enough. That should be enough for it to work. Also, what we can do, we can add some uh, configuration to run all the tests automatically. What we do, we go click up here and add configuration for um, debugger and other stuff, I suppose. Uh, we add a new configuration, PHP unit. We want an interpreter, which is our remote interpreter, and that should be it, I think. Well, it's complaining because... And just to find the interpreter, let's say apply, okay. And now we can test it. So we're going to our tests, we say we create a new 
test class which we'll call simple test it will extend a test case from PHP unit framework and here we're gonna have a test annotation public function simple test and as you can see we have two buttons coming up here to run the old uh, class or just a single method and we're gonna say this assert true true so it has to pass right so we can now we can probably run the test from here test passes we can run the old class I don't know why he always asks for this as I created this the runner right complaints because there's no interpreter I wanted to try but now it passes probably yes the old class and I can probably say with this unnamed which we need to edit if I run it from here it will run the old suit probably so if I duplicate this copy and paste I deleted that class I'm trying to create a new one so a new PHP class another test if I run this now test pass 2 yeah so we have two tests and two assertions I don't know why before didn't really work but writing it from scratch sometimes it's the better th the best thing it's working now so it ran it ran both tests and both assertions so this unnamed it's our global uh, test runner to run all the um, all the tests to be honest I don't understand why to run the single one he wants a new test runner well that one should be the Why the single ones won't maybe I did some mistake but no PHP unit is this one right new unnamed PHP unit I don't know okay let's let's see we'll get to the to, to fix it or I'll have a look and I will let you know guys so guys um, I had a look and uh, I just realized why he was asking for every test to create a new uh, test runner which is actually normal for um, PHP Storm is something that PHP Storm wants to do it creates it actually in automatic the problem is for everyone that I was trying to run it it would ask me for the interpreter and this is why uh, this is because when before I went into settings and created the the interpreter for the remote interpreter let's say I actually uh, did a mistake and 
and, and I didn't apply. So I was in the situation where no interpreter was selected. And when running tests, PHP unit didn't know what to do, didn't know which interpreter to use. And it was asking me every time. So if here, when you create your remote interpreter, you say apply. Then when you go in your test and, and run it again, it will, yes, create a new test runner, which then you have the possibility to save or not, but it automatically knew which interpreter to use. So it just, the test just ran, it actually passed with our simple assertion. And now you have the option to save it if you want. We don't, honestly, because when we want to run a simple test, we have our button here to do it. And when we want to run all tests, we have our Docker PHP unit, which once triggered, runs the old suit. So test pass two of two tests in four milliseconds. And that's it for the configuration. So the configuration works. Next, we're gonna start um, writing code for our uh, simple test, uh, not test, um, simple project, let's call it API project.